they're in. Um, Whenever there's a guy with a camera around, like I'm usually the guy that's like, oh, I don't want my picture taken right now. Like I'm just trying to have some fun, you know? Like I don't need someone putting a camera in my face. So those, that's what's kind of going through my mind whenever those situations happen. Where it's like, oh, they don't need a camera in their face right now. Where the reality is like, you ask them, they're probably gonna be like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. But those are the ways that I kind of justify to myself. Like, oh, you don't need to be taking that picture. It's probably not even gonna be that good. Kind of as an exercise, I always kind of just try to squash those thoughts as soon as they come. Because it's like, that's why else are you taking pictures if you're, you know, you're not going to do moments justice. I first got my start in photography in high school. I would just shoot like random stuff and develop, develop my own film and then go into the dark room and spend time. Uh, messing with the chemicals and I was definitely not doing anything right and because I didn't really have much guidance because it they were teaching like digital and I, I just really wanted to do f uh, film I don't know if it's just like the way my brain operates but any situation I'm in for hanging out with friends um, hanging out at a bar um, standing in line for a movie anything like those little moments always drop jump out at me where it's just like that's a moment that's come and gone. That's a moment that's come and gone. Like, as a photographer, I always wish you have a camera in your hand to, you know, capture that stuff. But then you make it weird. But <laughs> I think more than anything, when getting into photography, the key is just to shoot as much as possible. That way, you put yourselves in these scenarios. So when it is time to do paid work, you have a lot of that under your belt. But more important than anything, is to scare yourself and challenge yourself on a shoot. Um, reach out to someone you've never met before, walk up to someone on the street and ask them to take the picture, but that's going to be scary and that's going to you know, build you up and make you a little bit more resilient. So I think more than anything, it's important to, to put those challenges in front of you. Ajibara. <laughs> This summer I had the opportunity to go to Cuba, and that country has every element to put me outside my comfort zone. Don't know the language. There's no internet, no GPS. It's a whole other set of cultural norms that I'm not familiar with. So all that put me way outside the walls of my comfort zone. I found a good way to dive a little bit deeper into the Cuban culture by way of Havana Music School, uh, which I felt like would give me a more genuine experience than just checking into a hotel or booking through a travel agency. I really didn't know what to expect going there. Um, I didn't know if people were going to be hostile towards Americans just because of what's going on with the political climate. But, but my, in my experience, like people were super, super friendly and receptive, and they were glad I was there. They were glad to let me take their picture and glad to show me around. So everywhere you turn in Cuba, there's music going on throughout the culture, throughout their families, throughout everything, even just like daily chores, like mashing coffee beans. There's rhythm and you know, doing laundry and there's rhythm in that. And every turn you make going down the streets, there's people playing music, not even people playing for money, there's just people just enjoying themselves. There's just so much emotion, you know, micro expressions going on um, just in these moments that are, you know, already happening. Like it's just presenting itself to you. So microexpressions is like itself is is a pseudoscience of of expressions that are involuntary that all people throughout all walks of life do them um, without even realizing it or controlling them like happy sad afraid surprised like any of them they cause this quick jolt of expression basically 
when photographing subjects, if you're picking up on something that's going on, like obviously the next step is like they're going to react a certain way. So, but being ready for those expressions are kind of the things that I kind of geek out on. Those situations feel really special to me where I'm able just to do it justice by taking pictures of it and portraying that emotion through the photographs. So I think more than anything when you're traveling, it's, it's the people that make it special. Um, you can photograph the same sunset over and over again, you know, multiple years apart, but like all I want to do is throw, throw a person in front of that landscape and capture that raw emotion and bring that justice. Traveling is really important in opening yourself up to new experiences. We all get so caught up in our own little bubbles and uh, due to work and, you know, convenience. I don't necessarily believe that you need to travel, like, to a different country to find beauty, but I s still think it's important to get outside of your little bubble and, and you know, meet new people and try to you know, find, find the beauty in, in those situations and try to do, do that justice. Even if it's just leaving your community or le leaving your town um, and keeping an open mind but rooting that in positivity and just exposing yourself to um, different ideas and different, different cultures and different ways of thinking. So that's all really important to me.